So, you probably already know this if you've seen my channel recently, but I've been rewatching The Flash, and every time I finish a season, I rank all the episodes of that season. Now that I've finished The Flash Season 5, naturally, I would rank all the episodes of that season. Now that I've had the chance to rewatch it, I'll give very, very short reviews, and then a score at the end, just determining what I think about each episode, and ranking them from worst to best. So with that in mind, let's start with the worst episode of the season, number 22. I don't understand how I could do something like that to her. Nora, you gotta snap out of this. What I have to do is kill you. This episode I don't think was very good. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I did kind of like the drama between Nora and Iris, just explaining why Nora had a problem with Iris up until this point. I thought some of those scenes were pretty well acted, but I just, I didn't love it, and it doesn't help that the villain of this episode, Spin, or Spencer Young, was pretty bad, and the fight scenes and most of what happened in this episode were not very good at all, and I think that while this episode isn't terrible, it is the worst episode of the season, in my opinion. Who do you think's this next victim? He kidnapped Barry. Let's go save the Flash. This episode was pretty disappointing. I mean, Ragdoll was pretty good, but literally everything that else that happened in this episode was not very good at all. The storylines weren't great in that moment, where Iris jumped off the building to save Barry, not only defied the laws of physics, but it was such a stupid moment that it made this episode significantly worse. And that was the moment that they, I guess, thought that that would uh, convince Excess to not dislike Iris anymore, which I thought that was very forced. And it basically everything they did in this episode surrounding Ragdoll or everything outside of Ragdoll himself just didn't work, making this episode a lot worse than it could have been. Go back to see your father. No. To run with the flag. No. This is your legacy. Another broken family. This episode was mostly without Barry, or at least the Flash, I mean, he just he just wasn't in any of the action, which, the reason for that is because the actor was filming Elseworlds, so they freed him up for that, but still, it doesn't really help things as Excess was focused on, and I really disliked her a lot more in this rewatch of the season that I thought I did, and this storyline, where she's trying to convince Weather Witch that she's a good person, I didn't like that very much, and it was very, very cheesy. I did like certain things about this episode, like Sherlock's investigation of, of uh, Excess, which in the entirety of the season I liked, and the fact that the Batmobile technically kind of a little bit debuted in this episode as the car that Silver Ghost uses. The supercar was made by Wayne Enterprises, so that would be kind of the Batmobile. Those are the things I like, but overall, definitely I think one of the weaker episodes of the season. Welcome to the market. Let's make a deal. We're making a deal with the devil. Tonight you're working for Goldface. This episode is another episode that is mostly flashless, which doesn't help things at all, again, like I mentioned, but this episode does have its moments, as the storyline with Barry and Ralph I thought was kind of fun, I really like the back and forth between those characters on this show, and that's not the problem, it's definitely not amazing or anything, but it's not bad, the actual problem with the episode has to do with Iris West, as she goes to Cicada's house, and not only does she go there alone, which is so stupid, but also she manages to not only get out of there alive, but also she basically just defeats Cicada with Pepper spray and a kitchen knife which is like the stupidest moment ever while Cicada didn't turn out to be the main villain the fact that she he was defeated by Iris West with not, not even with a gun just with a knife not even a knife a kitchen knife as well as pepper spray is just too stupid to handle so this episode I thought was not very good girl hey girl what's going on she's working with them we don't know what she's capable of I hate you I couldn't stop her. I'm not the same person I was. I think this episode is pretty damn stupid, like the characters that they chose to put on the new rogues were not very well chosen, none of them are very good, Ragdoll has cool abilities but he's not exactly a great character, this team of rogues is not good at all and that didn't help the episode at all, while the rest of the episode was also pretty stupid, I mean that twist at the end with the heist with the hostages were Team Flash, such a stupid twist and it's not that I didn't see it coming, it's just that it, it makes no sense and also for some reason they looked pretty stupid. With those glasses. Another thing is that Iris did punch Ragdoll and he just got defeated just he there, which was ridiculous. I didn't love this episode, I didn't hate it either. I thought it was kind of fun, not bad at all, and it had its moments, but overall, this is another episode of the season that I just thought was not very good at all. Or Cicada finds these guys with bad news. You sure they're worth saving? No! He wants to kill us? I say we kill him first. 
This was at the point of the season where Cicada became less of a threat and more of an annoyance, and while this episode does have some pretty intense moments, like when uh, Cicada d uh, breaks Excess's back, or when the Flash does go all out on Cicada and basically just kicks his ass, uh, those uh, those moments are kind of ruined by what uh, this episode symbolizes, which is the fact that Cicada, who seemed like he was going to be a good and uh, a good villain, but also a threatening villain, turned out to be a character who had no threat level at all for Team Flash and was ruined, I think, most mostly because of episodes like this one. Also, not to mention that they had Norvac back, terrible character, and they tried the redemption arc thing, which didn't work at all. This episode is just okay, but it could have been really, really good, considering the actual storyline of the episode was pretty good, but I think that the storyline was ruined by a lot of things. You lied to us for months! I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye! Huh? Your dad was wrong. We got a big problem. How could he stop loving me? I didn't really like Caitlyn's storyline in this season, and I think that really ever since season 3, they haven't really known what to do with Killer Frost. In this episode, it, it really showed that, because they brought Icicle in for the season, and he definitely is not a bad villain, per se, and he isn't really a bad villain at all, but I just didn't really care about the uh, Caitlyn uh, snowpack, her family. Also, I don't like her mother very much. This episode does have some very good fight scenes, and it's got a lot of great moments, but I just don't think this episode was great great at all and that's really all i have to say about it nora's in trouble we have to go in after her if you die in there die out here she's protecting her secret dad can't see my memories The concept of this episode, going into Nora's memory, seeing the future when she was a child and seeing the Flash Museum is such an interesting concept and I think that it was handled well for the most part but it also wasn't as good as I thought maybe it could be. That being said, it is it definitely has its moments. Visually this episode is pretty cool especially when wherever, whenever we're in Nora's mind where it's all purple, that definitely visually I think looks pretty cool and while this episode definitely I don't think was as good as it could have been, it was not bad either. I don't have a suit. Actually, I have a backup. Total fan favorite. Now, I gotta say, this episode was so much worse than I remembered it. Like, I thought when it came out that it was, like, the best premiere of the show ever, but watching it now, it's not very good, and honestly, I do not know why at all I liked it. It's not great. I mean, the fact that Barry gets his new costume in this episode, not only that, but everyone's reaction to him getting the new costume, like, Cisco's especially, it was just so unbelievable, because the costume looks terrible, and the fact that he has the flash ring is pretty cool, and the plain vibrant through the bridge like in the comics the new 52 that was certainly cool but this episode just out of for some reason I liked it originally but watching it now it's just not that good and uh, this episode already I didn't like Nora as much as I remember liking her so this episode definitely was probably the most disappointing rewatch of the entirety of the show as it was just so much worse than I remembered it being I quarantined myself for everyone's safety. You're lying to us! What did you do to me? You gotta think about this thing as CSI. This guy's story doesn't add up. He's the only family I have left. So like I said, I didn't love the Icicle and Caitlyn storyline, but this episode was certainly a lot better than the episode Snowpack. While visually and the, like, the Icicle fight scenes weren't as good here, the actual storyline with the Icicle and the fact that Caitlyn's mother wasn't in it definitely helps it to make it better than the other uh, Icicle episodes. It's not that much better, but looking at the scores, they're not very different. But still, this episode definitely had a lot better things in it and they handled the Icicle character a lot better. And the twist that the Thomas Snow character this entire time was Icicle was one that I honestly don't remember seeing coming, so that definitely helped the episode quite a bit. I'm off the face of the planet. These people need protection. This is our last chance. We have to find Cicada, or we lose everyone. The penultimate episode of the season I don't think was great. I mean, it wasn't bad, don't get me wrong, but I do think that is, a lot of things happened in this episode I just didn't love. Like, the storyline with Sherlock, and I can't even remember her name off the top of my head, but that storyline wasn't great. Joe's storyline felt like it, it was really forced, not very well written or acted, and the storyline, obviously, with Cicada version 2, not a very good villain at all, and the one thing that I did like about the episode with Ralph invest or trying to figure out what uh, Eobard's plan is, and then figuring out at the end of the episode that 
bad. Certainly was really, really good, but everything else in the episode, I just, I don't think it was great. Again, none of it was bad, necessarily, but none of it was great, except for the storyline with Ralph. Dad side. I think it's time for you to get back to basics. Oh. It takes time to hone your skills. Gotcha. Alright, that's enough for that. So this episode, for the most part, was, you know, just kind of a Villain of the Week episode with this new villain named Block, who wasn't very good at all, and while I did kind of like the storyline with XS getting to know her parents and training with Barry, I don't think it helped uh, the episode as much as it could have, as overall, it was just a Villain of the Week episode. That is until the ending, where the last couple of minutes were really, really good. This was a kind of like peak Cicada. He was pretty badass, very threatening, and he beat the crap out of Team Flash, which was a very very, very brutal and very intense moment that I, re I think saved the episode from being just okay to being actually fairly good. Time travel. This Tuesday. It's mom. I have to fix this. This Tuesday. I keep trying to change the outcome. This Tuesday. I'm supposed to protect you. This was a big time loop episode, and I think the concept of a time loop is very interesting. Like, uh, Edge of Tomorrow is a movie with a time loop concept, and I think it's so good. And The Arrowverse has now tried it twice with Here I Go Again on Legends of Tomorrow and Cause and Excess on The Flash, and both of them were pretty good, but I don't think this one was amazing or anything. I think they could have used the concept of the time loop better, but other than that, I really don't have any other complaints. I thought it was very good. The fact that Barry wasn't in it very much didn't really hold it down as this episode somehow how some way Nora was actually pretty likable and she worked as the protagonist of this episode visually this episode looks pretty good Cicada is for some reason somehow actually pretty threatening and overall definitely a good not great but definitely a good use of the a very interesting concept in the time loop all that I want to keep you safe and fed give you all the things a kid should have while episode 2 I think was peak Cicada in terms of how badass and threatening he was, episode 7 was peak Cicada in terms of him just being a character as this episode showed his origin story and while that moment at the end where he got the dagger and he said that all metahumans must die was terrible, very like bad, very badly acted and so over the top, other than that I think that his origin story was genuinely pretty good, it was very, very well acted I thought and it made a lot of sense and this definitely was like I said peak Cicada being a character so overall definitely an episode that i genuinely did kind of like sherlock wells i'm here to get your killer let's hope we're not too late to save his next victim The Death of Vibe is actually a very good episode. I just think that the title is so great. Like, it made us obviously think that Vibe would die, but obviously the fact that they spoiled in the title made us think that maybe that's not true. But I, they didn't really do either of those things. They killed Vibe, the superhero, in terms of faking his death and making everyone think that he killed, that he was killed. And while I don't think that really led anywhere in the season, in this actual episode, it was really, really good. The twist in the end worked really, really, like, really well. Nora was actually pretty likable in this episode, the visuals were not bad, and uh, the Cisco's death, I remember originally watching it, it was a very intense moment, and even slightly emotional before a very satisfying and obviously relief of a payoff, making this episode a pretty good one, and one of the better episodes of the season. Cicada. Something is struggling to break through, or someone. We have to move. This episode finally put to rest the conflict between Team Flash and the original Cicada because he just was so, it was just used way too much after he was made kind of obsolete. I think that honestly, he should have been defeated in episode 8 and then after episode 9, there's a new villain, maybe the Reverse Flash, maybe Cicada version 2. Either way, this episode finally put that to rest and I'm glad they did. And while the storyline was pretty good, it was definitely the ending where the, where the second Cicada showed up, definitely being at her peak threat level and peak badassery. And and also, even though she had no lines or character at all, peak character in this one, but where she did beat Team Flash up and had a very interesting and very badass entrance. And while this episode and this moment was the only time Cicada Version 2 was a good character, that made the episode as good as it was, making this episode, again, one of the better episodes of the season. This has everything from the day she arrived. Read it. From the beginning. She must have felt completely alone. But she wasn't. No! Run, Nora. 
So yeah, this episode did ruin the titular character of Godspeed, and I think that if they just didn't title the episode Godspeed, and they just didn't give him the name Godspeed, maybe changed his his costume, then this episode would have been a lot better than it is now. And while it is still pretty good, it is certainly a lot worse than it could have been. Other than Godspeed, however, I thought this episode was really good. Nora is, is for some reason, very likable in this episode. Honestly, if she just acted like this the rest of the season, she and the season could have been a lot better. But I I like the origin story. I like the futuristic take on, or the future, just seeing the future. It's really, really cool. And while this future doesn't exist anymore, it still is really cool to visit. And I like the flip flopping between Team Flash in the present day and the origin story in the future, or in the in the past for Nora. I think that all of that was really good, in spite of the fact that Godspeed sucked. With walls between you. This should all be over. It's too late. What do we do now? Tell your father. Tell your father everything. Starting off the top five is an episode that I think is mostly not great. So Katie version two is not a great villain in this episode, and the character of Time Bomb and her problems with her family, I just couldn't care less. The acting was also terrible. But the reason this episode is so high on the list is because of the ending, where Nora starts to reveal that she is working with Reverse Flash and then Sherlock, who I'm glad they gave they gave the opportunity to him because that was his whole storyline in the season, which was again my favorite part of the season. That finally let that out, and that was such an intense moment and. Bad Barry's reaction specifically, incredibly well acted and one of my favorite moments of the entirety of the season, making an otherwise pretty mediocre episode actually one of the best of the season. My mistake, and I'm not gonna make another one. You took my family away from me. Now watch me take yours. No! The first 10 minutes or so of this episode are not great, but the second the dagger is destroyed, the episode is really kicked into high gear as the reverse flash takes over, and he definitely carries a big portion of really the show, but this episode in particular, as he's released from prison, badass, awesome scene, fight scene with excess and the flash is great, the confrontation with Team Flash is really, really good, and reverse flash is just such an awesome villain overall, and in this episode as well, excess's death I don't think is as emotional as it maybe should have been and there are some parts in the episode that just don't look great but overall I think it was definitely a finale that pulled off what the season was trying to do while the rest of the season did not really. I'm going back to some crazy time. Savitar thought Zoom. And who is this? I knew we shouldn't have done this. Things just got a lot more complicated. This was the 100th episode of the show and, uh, and also the mid-season finale of season 5, so they had a lot to do and they pulled off most of it, paying homage and tribute to the entirety of the show, the first four seasons, more so the season 1, and basically the better the season was, the more screen time it got in this episode. Season 4 barely got any, season 3 got a little bit, season 2 got more, and season 1 got a crap ton, which I think definitely is what basically kind of they deserve. Season 4 maybe could have gotten a little bit more screen time, but still, I'm glad of what they did here. Seeing Zoom again was awesome. Seeing the Particle Accelerator explosion with all the people who got affected throughout the seasons, that was really cool to see, and it all worked out very well. The reason this episode isn't a 10 out of 10, the reason it's not higher on the list, is because the final confrontation with Cicada, while good, is very unsatisfying, and honestly, if Cicada was defeated here and uh, just in this episode, I think that would have worked so well. Killer Frost being immune, that never really needed to, do, to be a thing. Cicada just should have been defeated here and that is that the fact that they get this thing throughout this entire episode and then he just flies away and is unfazed by it and all they come up with is that killer frost is immune it's incredibly unsatisfying and that's the main reason this episode isn't my favorite episode of the season because while everything else is great that really ruins at least part of it definitely not very much but part of it making this only the third best episode of the season despite it being or having the potential to be the best or the second best King Shark versus Gorilla Grodd? Are you kidding me? This episode I thought was just so much fun. The CGI here was great. The CGI fight scenes were great. Both King Shark and Gorilla Grodd were such great characters here. Gorilla Grodd really felt like a very comic booky, very cartoony version of the character with his plan, and I think that worked so well. King Shark, this episode successfully made him more of an anti-hero slash a superhero, and they did it very, very well. And I'm not gonna really go into more detail than that because there isn't really much else to talk about. This episode was a great, basically big CGI fight scene that worked, I think, very well. And I honestly, uh, 
the fact that it fit into the season long storyline also did very much help it as it wasn't actually filler. Barry, did you time travel again? No, I didn't. Sorry, I was talking to Barry. I am Barry. Something is wrong with reality. Everyone thinks we're each other. In season five, I think the best episode that wasn't really a part of the season long storyline and it didn't really have anything to do with it, didn't even feature Nora West Allen, and that is Elseworlds Part 1, which not only is my favorite part of Elseworlds, but it is my favorite crossover episode ever, as it's the first crossover episode to feature Superman and the only one that really features him in a major, major role, or at least in a very good role, because I think season episode three of this uh, crossover didn't really do as good a job with the character, but the fact that we see Superman, Green Arrow, The Flash, and Supergirl all fighting such an iconic Justice League uh, villain like Amazo, Amazo made for such a Justice League moment. Honestly, probably the best live action Justice League we've ever seen in the history of television or even movies. But not only that, the body swap, the life swap between Barry Allen and Oliver Queen, the life swap between them was just so entertaining and so funny. And I loved how the two characters, the two actors portrayed each character with the personality of the other. So Oliver, for uh, Stephen Mel played Oliver Queen with Barry Allen's personality and abilities, while uh, Grant Gustin did the same thing and vice versa. And I think it just worked so well, making this my favorite crossover episode ever and also my favorite episode of this season. So anyway, in the comments down below, let me know what your ranking would be for every episode of this season. And stay tuned because I'm probably going to be doing the same thing for every season of Arrow.